Good morning, or depending on you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name's Ross, and as always told, out of voice of radio. So today, I'm here with my third and final video for Tabletop Gaming Not So Live. You see the lovely folks over at Tabletop Gaming, they were going to have the live show, as I'm sure you know, and it got cancelled, as I'm sure you know. And they were like, hey, do you want to make some Pokemon videos for our Not Quite So Live show? And I was like, yes, that sounds amazing. So what we're going to do today, we're going to finish off with is five Pokemon cards that broke the game. And when I say broke the game, I mean, in a very literal sense, they actually broke the game. They stopped the game working. I'm not talking like, whoa, that's broken, dude. I'm not talking about really good cards. I'm talking about actual broken cards. So there's something like Sneasel back in the day. Two energy, it let you flip a coin for each of your Pokemon in play, doing 20 damage for each heads, bearing in mind at the time the only darkness energy we had was a special kind that let you do an extra 10 damage with your attacks. It was completely dominant, but dominant isn't broken. I showed you in a previous video how great Gardevoir Gallade was, but again, great is not the same as broken. I am talking actual full-on proper job literally broke the game so with that in mind let's go in chronological order and let's start with slow king and slow king was just a simple case of mistranslation you see in japan this card wasn't that good you see it had a poker power whereby whenever your opponent played a trainer card you got to flip a coin and if heads that card did nothing and went back on top of their deck and back then we didn't differentiate into stadiums and supporters and any of that everything was just a trainer card but in japan slow king had to be active and slow king's attack was fine but nothing particularly special free energy 20 damage if heads 30 damage and confusion it was all right but it wasn't great so you could have a 50% chance of stopping every trainer if you had a Pokemon that wasn't a particularly good attacker. But when it got translated over here, yeah, um, they, they, they forgot the had to be active bit. Not only does that mean it worked on the bench, but it meant that it stacked. So I could have four Sloking on my bench, and when you tried to play a trainer card... I, I got to flip four coins. And you could only play that trainer card if all four coins were tails. When I say broke the game, I mean broke the game. <laughs> it just made trainer cards not work anymore. And let's just say that was um that was a card that ended up getting banned. Not in every format, but it did end up getting banned in modified. And it would then be a long time before the game got properly broken again. But Sableye from Stormfront managed it. And here's the thing. Sableye from Stormfront is a good card. And it actually saw a lot of play. For zero energy, it let you search an extra supporter card, discard it. And then that would be your attack for the turn. It was great going first. And speaking of going first, if it was your active Pokemon to begin the game, you went first. It was actually a really good card that saw quite a lot of play. But you see, when the black and white expansion of the Pokemon trading card came out, they, they, they changed the rules. And they let you play trainer cards going first. And then Sableye became broken. Because essentially what you would do is you would play four Sableye and, and not really any other Pokemon. Although you could. And then you started Sableye, guaranteed to go first. And because you were allowed to play trainer cards and attack turn one going first, you are still allowed to play item cards, not supporters. But you cannot attack going first now. But back with black and white, it was like the Wild West. You could do whatever you wanted. So you would go first and essentially you would just get rid of all of your opponent's Pokemon before they'd even had a chance to draw a card. And you might think, oh, come on, Warsi, we'll that sounds unrealistic. No, this actually like genuinely worked so you would have cards so the attack let's probably talk about the attack single energy 10 damage if the defending pokemon had fewer remaining hp than sableye you did 40 damage so the key here was that you would be trying to do 40 damage and ko their only active after taking out all of their bench 
Well, you had Expert Bout that gave you an extra 20 HP and let your attacks do an extra 20 damage. So now you've got Sableye and you've got 80 HP. And if your opponent's Pokemon has less than 80 HP, you're doing 60 damage. Oh, not quite enough. Let's play Special Dark because your energy for the turn. Now you're doing 70. So any 70 HP Pokemon going down here. Nice. We had the supporter card Seeker that met you and your opponent both had to pick up a bench Pokemon. But as we'll see in a minute, you had a Pokemon you didn't mind picking up. And then you would have cards like Poker Blower Plus. Now, Poker Blower Plus was an item card. And if you played two at the same time, you got to drag one of your opponent's bench Pokemon into the active. But if you played one... You flip a coin, and if heads, you place one damage counter. So that's how we're starting to pick away at our opponent's Pokemon. But we also play Crobat G. When you play it from a hand to your bench, you drop one damage counter on one of your opponent's Pokemon. Well, it's only one damage. No, it's not. Because you've got Poker Turn that lets you pick it up and replay it. And you've got Super Scoop Up that on a coin flip lets you pick it up and replay it. And you've got Junk Arm that lets you reuse stuff like Poker Turn so you can pick it up and replay it and what you're doing is dropping lots and lots of damage using seeker to take out one of their pokemon and clearly if they had one big pokemon you would you know make sure that one was on the bench and you would play seeker when it was the only bench pokemon and then you whittle down their active ko it was sableye and you won the game and it worked and you would play cards like Uxie to draw until you got seven cards in your hand and seeker would let you reuse it Poker Draw Plus. Now, Poker Draw Plus was another one of these fun ones. You play one, you draw a card, you play two, search your deck for any two cards, which is ridiculous. And we would even play Victory Medal. And I don't think there was ever any other deck ever that actually played Victory Medal. But I let you flip two coins. If one of them is heads, you drew a card. If both of them were heads, you searched your deck for any card and put it into your hand. And it actually was good in this deck. And essentially what you did was you drew your entire deck. And you whittled down all of your opponent's Pokemon. And you knocked out their active with Sableye. And you won the game before your opponent had even drawn a card. In the UK, what Pokemon did was they pretended black and white didn't exist for nationals. It wasn't legal and the rule changes hadn't come in. For US Nationals, they did an emergency rotation before Nationals. Rotation, which takes some legal sets away and basically says, right, now you can only play from this set onwards, generally happens after Worlds or occasionally now sometimes before Worlds. This happened before US Nationals, which never happens. But they had to do it to stop Sableye. The next card that properly broke the game was Lysander's trump card. And the thing was, Lysander's trump card was one of these cards that completely slipped through the testing process, came out, and after a couple of months, the entire player base had realized that this card was, in a very literal sense of the game, broken. You see, it was a supporter card that, let, that made both players shuffle all cards in their discard pile into their deck, other than Lysander's trump card. Okay. And essentially what everyone did was they played Seismitoad. Seismitoad for a double colorless energy does 30 damage and stopped your opponent playing item cards. Oh, that's disruptive. But the thing was, you would basically play a speed deck playing stuff like Shaman to draw until you got seven cards in your hand and Slurpuff to let you draw an extra card every turn, two if it was in the active. And what you would basically do is draw your entire deck every turn or two. And then use Lysander's trump card to get all those cards back. And what we basically did was we just abused coin flip cards. So Hypnotoxic Laser automatically poisoned. You put one damage counter on between turns. But on a coin flip, you got sleep. And then Verbank City Gym would turn that 10 poison between turns into 30. But then, of course, what you would do is you would play two or three of these Hypnotoxic Laser Return until you flipped heads on sleep. And you would play Super Scoop Up if you were damaged. You got to pick up your Pokemon on a coin flip. So you would pick up Seismitoad and Double Colorless Energy. You would promote a new Seismitoad from the bench. You would reattach the energy you just picked up. And unless your opponent was one hit KOing, bearing in mind they were often asleep and when they weren't asleep they were still definitely item locked. 
If they weren't one hit KOing, they never got a KO because you would just super scoop up. Then you would use Crushing Hammer, which got rid of one of their energy on a coin flip. And essentially every single turn, you got rid of their energy, completely healed up your Pokemon, poisoned them and put them to sleep. While item locking them. And I know you might be thinking, well, you know, surely you would run out of Lysander's trump card if you did this every turn. But no, no, you wouldn't. Because Versus Seeker was a card that let you pick up a supporter card from your discard pile. And that would get shuffled in with Lysander's trump card and allow you to reuse Lysander's trump card. At Nationals 2015, I commentated day one of Nationals entirely by myself. I did have some guests for day two. And the entire tournament was just Seismitoad decks beating up on everything else. And the final was two Seismitoad decks. It's not surprising. They banned Lysander's trump card before US Nationals to stop this happening again. Now, one that kind of flew under the radar a little bit and then got ridiculous was Archeops. You see, Archeops is a stage 2 Pokemon, so it's a little bit slow, but it's got an ability, Ancient Power, that says each player cannot play any Pokemon from his or her hand to evolve his or her Pokemon. So, yes, it could shut down Evolution Dex entirely, but Evolution Dex weren't everything back then, and it's a stage 2, so it was kind of slow. And it wasn't just a stage 2, it was a stage 2 fossil Pokemon, and they have separate rules that make them even more awkward to get into play than your regular stage 2, and no one took Archeops particularly seriously. And then Maxi's Hidden Ball Trick came out. You see, Maxi's Hidden Ball Trick was a supporter card that could only be played if it was the last card in your hand. But it let you put a fighting Pokemon from your discard pile onto your bench and draw five cards. Oh. So what you would essentially do is get Archeops into your discard pile, get a zero card hand, play Maxi's Hidden Ball Trick, and then you would put Archeops on the bench, draw five cards, and your opponent was locked out of Evolve Pokemon. Except you could do this turn one. You could literally go first and do this. So against an Evolution deck, your opponent would be locked out of Evolutions for the entire game. This is a game about... You don't have to evolve Pokemon. There's plenty of good basic Pokemon. But Pokemon at Heart is still a game where you evolve Pokemon. Not if this is out. And we had so many ways of getting this turn one. I mean, for instance, there was a card Battle Compressor that let you discard three cards from your deck. So you would discard Maxi, Sid, and Ball Trick, and Archeops. And someone else. And then if your last card in your hand was Versus Seeker, you pick up Maxi, Sid, and Ball Trick, and boom, you're off. There were so many ways to get this working. And yes, it ended up getting banned. And the most recent card that properly broke the game was a card that, that really relied on a ridiculous combo. And it's kind of hard to try and pinpoint which card exactly broke the game, but I'm giving it to Island Challenge Amulet. You see, Island Challenge Amulet was a Pokemon tool, is a Pokemon tool. And you attach it to one of your Pokemon EX or GX, and it gives them 100 less HP but means that they give up one less prize when KO'd by damage from your opponent's attack. Cool. The problem came in, in that in the expanded format, we've got Jirachi that only has 90 HP. So what happens if you attach an Island at Challenge Amulet to Jirachi? It gets KO'd and gives up two prizes. Remember, it only gives up one fewer prize if KO'd by damage from an attack. So you could use Island Challenge Amulet to just KO Jirachi. Why would you want to do that? Because of Reset Stamp. Reset Stamp forces your opponent to shuffle their hand into their deck and draw a new hand of cards equal to their remaining prizes. Oh. So how about we try and get them to just a single prize card remaining? Yes. That sounds like fun. So what we essentially do here is we put two Island Challenge Amulet onto two Jirachi... My opponent takes four prizes. I then play Duskstone to evolve into Miss Magius. Duskstone lets me evolve into Miss Magius turn one, even though I shouldn't usually be able to evolve. Miss Magius lets me KO it and draw until I've got seven cards in my hand. So now I've given away four cards with Jirachi, one prize card with Miss Magius. My opponent has one prize card remaining, and they haven't even started the game yet. They haven't even drawn a card. Now I play Reset Stamp, and my opponent has one card in their hand. They haven't played a turn, they haven't drawn any cards. They are going to start their very first turn of the game with one card in their hand. And I'm going to play Chip Chip Ice Axe, that lets me look at the top three cards of their deck. 
and I choose the card they're going to draw at the beginning of their next turn. Oh, and then I've got all kinds of cards like uh, Jesse and James or Mars that let me just get rid of a card in their hand. So now my opponent has a zero card hand, and I know they're going to top deck nothing good next turn. And then I attack with, like, whatever I want. People use Garchomp and Giratina because it had a decent attack for low energy. It didn't really matter. Because essentially what you do here is you put your opponent down to a zero card hand and make sure they draw nothing for the entire game. Shall we say, um, I think that counts as breaking the game. And actually, I planned this. And then Pokemon went and revealed a card over in Japan, which totally breaks the game. It's Shedinja. You see, the new Shedinja's got an ability that says it can only be put into play using Ninjask's ability. Ninjask's ability lets you search your deck for a Shedinja and put it into play. It's in fact the exact same ability that an old Ninjask had. So essentially, Shedinja can only be put into play using Ninjask's ability. What's broken about that? They've printed Shedinja as a basic Pokemon. But it's got an ability that says you can only put it into play using Ninjas' ability. The problem is, the rule of deck construction in the Pokemon trading card game says, you must have at least one basic Pokemon in your deck. Well, Shedinja is a basic Pokemon. So if I make my deck with just one Shedinja and no other basic Pokemon, that is a legal deck. But I can never put that Shedinja into play. So when I go to start the game, I draw a new hand of seven cards, and I will have no basic I can play. And I will do this over and over again until time runs out and the game ends in a draw. I'll never win a game, unless my opponent scoops out of frustration, gives up the game, concedes. But I will never lose a game. Shedinja lets you make an actual legal Pokemon deck that you can never start a game with. How weird is that? Like all the other cards here, this is going to happen. I didn't actually mention that the whole Island Challenge Amulet combo led to Island Challenge Amulet and a bunch of other cards being banned and expanded. Well, of course it did. It kind of had to. <laughs> because, well, it was, it was too good, quite frankly. It wasn't the only card. A bunch of them got banned. Island Challenge Amulet's been banned. Chip Chip Ice Axe has been banned. Uh, Miss Magius has been banned. Reset Stamp has been banned. <laughs> they banned like the whole combo. It's kind of funny. All of these ended up with bans or emergency rotations and Shininja will as well. And that's basically it. They, those are the cards that actually broke the game. And like I said, I'm not talking about really good cards or really brokenly good cards. I'm talking about actual, genuine, legitimate, actually broke the game. So there you have it. But as always, ladies and gentlemen, this is the point where I'd, I'd like to hear from you guys. So, you know, drop a comment down and tell me if there's any other cards you can remember that did that. Or whether you think any of these cards are a little bit overblown. Go nuts in the comment section, but be nice! And I should also add, massive fat out to Tabletop Gaming. Looks like this is going to be my third and final video. As always, thank you guys for watching. Thank you to Tabletop Gaming for, for hooking me up with this. That's really sweet of them. And I know that I did a podcast with them and I wrote a column for one of their issues. And they interviewed me for a Pokemon thing and I'm doing this and all of that. So no, I'm not objective at this stage. But I've been subscribed to Tabletop Gaming since before I did any of this stuff. It is the only magazine I, I read on a monthly basis. It's the only one I'm subscribed to. And I literally could not recommend it more highly. So go and check it out, would you? Otherwise, just, you know, most important thing as always, look after yourselves till next time. Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching a very special PTCG Radio. Bye!